we're going to do uh, the penultimate type, which is going to be matrix proofs for proof by induction. So we want to prove by induction that this matrix, this 2 by 2 matrix, 1 minus 1, 0, 2 to the power of n is equal to 1, 1 minus 2 to the power of n, 0, 2 to the power of n for all members of, uh, sorry, for all n, which are members of the positive integers, just written in a slightly different way here. So it's just going to be the same kinds of things that we've done as we did before. This is going to be most similar to type 1. It's going to be most similar to the series type. There's not going to be that f of n plus 1 minus f of n or f of k plus 1 minus f of k. They're just going to be like the, the first step that we did. So first of all, we'll show that it's true for n equals 1. So the left-hand side is just going to be 1 minus 1, 0, and 2. And the right-hand side of this thing is just going to be 1. Then we've got 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. I guess I should write 1 minus 2. And then we've got 0, and we've got 2 to the power of 1, which is 1 minus 1, 0, and 2. So it is true for n equals 1. And now we're going to assume that it's true for n equals k. In other words, the thing we're assuming that's true is 1 minus 1, 0, 2 to the power of k is equal to 1, 1 minus 2 to the power of k, 0, 2 to the power of k. And then we're going to show that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So we'll start with that left-hand side. So it's going to be 1 minus 1, 0, 2, and we're going to give it to the power of k plus 1. Now, do you remember what we did before with the series? What did I give as a little hint for the series summation, series proof? Good. We're going to say the thing that we're aiming for, for k plus 1. It's going to be pretty obvious for this, but we're just going to get in the habit of always doing this. The thing we're going to aim for will be 1, 0, 1 minus 2 to the power of k plus 1, and 2 to the power of k plus 1. This one's pretty obvious what you're aiming for, but some of the other ones are going to be more complicated. So coming back to this, what is um, something to the power of k plus 1 the same as, using our assumption? Uh, something to the power of 2 plus k plus 1. Good. Something to the power of k. Let's actually write that out properly. Let's not rush. So it's going to be the same thing as something to the power of k multiplied by itself. And you could have those two things the other way around. Although with matrix multiplication, that's not normally the case. The order matters when you multiply them because they're the same matrix. It doesn't matter if you're multiplying it to the power of k and then to the power of 1 or to the power of 1 and then to the power of k. So we're going to use the assumption. We already know from our assumption that this is equal to 1, 1 minus 2 to the power of k, 0 and 2 to the power of k. And we're going to multiply that by 1 minus 1, 0, and two. It's really important that you have like a clear, distinct gap between the elements. Otherwise, this thing starts to look like, is it bleeding into that first one? So just make sure you're keeping those separate from each other. So we're actually just going to go about and do that matrix multiplication. Um, so we're going to do for the first one that we've got up here, I know that the answer is going to be one, but I'm just going to show you where that's come from. So I've got one times one, which is one, and then this thing times zero, which is obviously just going to contribute nothing to it because it's just a one. Then we're going to get this one up here, which we're hoping is going to be one minus two to the power of k plus one. So it's going to be this times this. So I've got one times minus one, that's minus one, and then I've got two times this. So that's plus two times one minus two to the power of k. Then the one down here, I'm expecting the answer to be a zero, and I've got this multiplied by this. Second row, first column. Forget the second row and the first column. So I've got 0 times 1 and 2 to the power of k times 0, which is obviously just going to be 0. And then my last one, second row, second column. I'm going to do the second row, and I'm going to do the second column. So I've got the 0 times the minus 1, which is 0. And then I've just got 2 to the power of k times 2. And then all I'm going to do on the next line is just hope for the best that it's the same as my thing I'm aiming for. Well, I've got minus 1 plus 2, which is just 1. And I've got minus 2 times 2 to the power of k. And 2 times 2 to the power of k is 2 to the power of k plus 1. And then I've got 0, and then I've got 2 to the power of k plus 1. 
Hence, this is true for n equals k plus 1. Because I got the thing I was aiming for. I got the same as the formula, but instead of it saying n, it's saying k plus 1. This is quite an easy one to start off with. And so we just do the same old thing as before. Since it is true for n equals 1 and true for n equals k plus 1, when assumed true for n equals k, it is true for n as a member of the integer positive, the positive integers. And that's it. So it's, you can see why it's more similar to series, because with series, we did the same kind of thing of when we were trying to sum the series up to k plus 1, we summed it up to k, and then we added on the extra one. Sorry, we summed it, yeah, we summed it up to k and added on an extra one. This is the same thing. We're doing it to the power of k plus 1, so we do it all the way up to k, and then just multiply it by an extra one to get the k plus 1. No, there's none of that. that, that that's only for divisibility that that will ever be happening. That f of k plus 1 minus f of k is only for divisibility. So we're just going to do one more of these, and then we're going to do some practice. I think I'm doing one more of these. Yeah, just one more. We're going to prove by induction that minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4 to the power of n is equal to this expression that we've got. And this is just for the positive integers um, of n. So I'm going to put that there. So we're going to do the same as before. It's getting pretty boring. Show that it's true for n is 1. So the left-hand side is obviously minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4. The right-hand side, we like to show that we're doing some substitution. So it's going to be minus 3 plus 1, 9 times 1, minus 1, and 3 times 1 plus 1. Probably should have written 3 times 1, but whatever. It's, it's so obvious, really. So we've got minus 2, 9, minus 1, and 4. Left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. I'm not sure I wrote that on the previous page, but it's so obvious. Left-hand side equals right-hand side, so it's true for n equals 1. So we'll assume that it's true for n equals k. So minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4 to the power of k is going to be minus 3k plus 1. 9k minus k and 3k plus 1. Now this time I'm going to spend a little bit more time on my aim because the aim is not going to be quite as obvious as it was previously. So the aim when I'm going to try and show it's true for k plus 1 is going to be minus 3 k plus 1 plus 1, 9 k plus 1, minus k plus 1, 3 k plus 1 plus 1. That's what I want it to look like at the very end, but it's not going to be obvious when it looks like that. So what do you think I should do to this? Uh, just yeah, just expand it and simplify it. So I know that if I get this thing when it's expanded and simplified, I can just write that one, and then I've actually done that, OK? So you can always you know, write this aim and just put it to the side of the page. So it doesn't, you don't need to cross it off. The examiner won't mind seeing it, but just don't have it. I mean, I, I've got a, a small space, really. I, I would like the aim to be somewhere on the side of your A4 page, but we're just going to do it here. So what does this simplify to? Minus 3k minus 2, 9k plus 9, minus k minus 1, and and 3k plus 4. So it's more likely that we're going to get this from our calculation, and then all we do is just say that it's the same as this, and then we've shown that it's true. So I'm going to just put that red line back over here to show we're done with what our aim is, and we're going to continue with the question, and we're going to show that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So we're going to be doing minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4 to the power of k plus 1 which is the same as minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4. 
I'm going to just do this one the other way around for a second, because do you remember before we did it to the power of k and then the power of 1? I'm going to do it to the power of 1, and then I'm going to do it to the power of k on this side. Just to show you it doesn't matter about the order that you do them for these types of questions where it's the same matrix. So it's going to be minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4, multiplied by this thing to the power of k, which is this thing that we've got here. So that's going to be minus 3k plus 1, 9k, minus k, and 3k plus 1. Now, technically, you're running out of, ex let's say you're running out of time in the exam, okay? You're in your last minute. You could literally just write that here, because you know that this times this has got to equal this, because they're asking you to prove it's true. So if you've run out of time, or you're just being a bit cheeky, why not just say that this times this is this, and then write that down as the next line? Like, we know it is, but I'm not, te I'm not teaching you to do that. But if you're ever in like a sticky situation, you think, oh my god, I just need to get this question done, because I've got 30 seconds left, they're about to say put your pens down. Why not? But we're going to do it the long way, just to make sure that it does actually give you the right thing, okay? So I'm going to be doing this times this. So that's minus 2 times this, and then 9 times this. So minus 2 times this is going to be 6k minus 2. And then I've got 9 times minus k, which is minus 9k, which is great because it's going to be the same as that. This set that I've got here, sorry, this one that I want here is the first row in the second column. So it's going to be this times this. So that's going to be minus 18k and then 9 times this, which is 27k plus 9, which again does simplify to 9k plus 9. This one down here is going to be the first row, sorry, the second row in the first column. So it's minus 1 times this, which is 3k minus 1, and then 4 times this, which is minus 4k, which does give us the thing that we're looking for. And then I'm going to do second row, second column, which is minus 9k plus 12k plus 4. And then I'm literally just going to be copying and pasting the things I've written. So this thing here is the same as that, minus 3k minus 2. This is 9k plus 9. This is minus k minus 1. And this is 3k plus 4. And so it's important that we actually put it back in that k plus 1 form, the original aim. To make it clear that it's the same formula, but instead of n or k, we've replaced it with k plus 1. Hence, it is true for n equals k plus 1. And then that same old, same old. Since it is true for n equals 1 and true for n equals k plus 1, when assumed true, for n equals k, it is true for n as a member of the positive integers. And that is enough to help us have a go at exercise 8c. Okay? So my top tip for this is the aim. That's the most important thing that you do here. Don't just do this primary bit of the aim. Manipulate the aim so that that's the thing you know you're likely to arrive at. So if you've arrived at that, you can just really sneakily put it in this form without having to even think, oh, what does it factorize to? What does it do? Because you've already done that expanding and simplifying. So you just know it's going to be able to go backwards into that thing. And the examiner doesn't need to see any more than just it going from that to that. They don't need to know what thinking went on to do that. They just want to see the flow of that work there. Okay. And like I said before, in theory, you could have gone straight from this line to this line if you were running out of time. This bit in here was us just verifying that it did actually work. And obviously, if you're proving something and you're doing uni maths and you're not in an under pressure time exam where every second counts, I wouldn't want you to skip that line. But here. And if you're really running out of time, could you go from that line to the same question? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think, I think that would lack too many method marks for you to go from that to that. I think they would like to see this in between one. It's not clear from the mark scheme. It just says, showing working that they then arrive at this kind of thing that they've got. So that would depend on the 
it will depend on the examiner. Andrew, what were you going to say? Um, yeah, would you go from the third line to the um, fifth line? Could I go from the third? line to the fifth line yes you could also do that as well if you wanted to go from this to this I think that's convincing enough that that is the same thing as that one um, for, but when you guys are doing it I don't want you skipping anything because I want you to practice matrix multiplication as part of tra is training you to do well with matrix multiplication as well but just I'm only ever saying this if you're in the stress of the exam and I know that an hour and a half to do an exam when there's a lot of difficult questions I'm just trying to help you get as many marks as possible because I want you to do the best you can. Okay, so we're going to do exercise 8B. I'm just going to do some of those questions now and we'll do some at home.